When I finished school in 1998, terribly so badly, I wanted to be a doctor. I spent a lot of time with my elder brother and the other warriors at home during school holidays, and I had to, to stay at home for one year without going to school. As some of my relatives live in Tanzania, we, we organized, unfortunately, not allowed any more lion hunting. Uh, lion hunting is prohibited as conservation is very keen in East Africa, conserving of wildlife. And uh, when we went for lion hunting, I was completely the most unskilled. I was the most uh, unprofessional. I don't know even what to do when a lion comes or an, when a lion attacks any of us. Uh, you should not always tell your parents that you are going for land hunting. And as warriors, you have all the freedom to do what you want. So we moved to Tanzania and we had meat for almost a month, nothing but meat. That we do believe that a lot of herbs will make you fearless and you will not even care what will happen to you. In 1992, that was the year that we organized the battle. Maasai people are known dependently to depend with three meals in your lifetime. And mostly as a warrior, you are not allowed to eat meat or eat anything fatty in front of the prohibited. So we organized to have this meat camp, which should last us for a month, that we only, strictly eat meat only. And there is a tree, we call it Acacia Nut Alliances, that we make herbs that you drink all day long that makes you completely fearless. We mix almost about 23 different trees, including Oleodentra bichanani, including Ole Africana, including Obugia Yugansiesis, including uh, all kinds of acacia that makes you have an appetizer to eat more meat and strong and no fat belly. And the reason why you do that is for you to have that fear out of you that you care less when we go for land hunt. So most of the time, land hunting we organize during the wet season, where we can, Maasai warriors are known to be very good in tracking. And we did a lot of tracking before even we organized this special day. So we woke up in the morning, mostly we never tell our mothers because we do believe that when they say you don't go, it's bad luck. So we pretend we are having a good time the whole night with the girls. Our spears are so well sharpened. We sing the whole night long, pretending that we are having fun with the girls, but we are letting everybody sleep and then we leave. We left very early in the morning at about uh, three o'clock. And one of the major reasons why we keep on singing the whole night is to hear at night, as we know that lion do roar at night as one way of uniting, uniting at night. And we actually overheard lion roaring really, really far, about 10 kilometers. We woke up very early in the morning and that is it. We began a long journey and we had to drink a lot of milk before we left and we walked almost eight kilometers before we found the lion tracks. Lion tracks were, obviously we can differentiate between a male and a female and we found immediately that was an old male that was found and we followed the track for about a kilometer. When normally the policy when hunting lion is every pride of the warrior is to be the first one to be recognized to make the lion bleed with the honor will be yours. That time was the beginning when all the lions in Serengeti and the Mara had the CBV, which is canine distemper virus, so most of the lions were not doing well. And there is a theory in Mass Island, you better found a lion when he have a fat belly. It's easy to hunt a fat belly lion than a skinny lion. It's more active and more aggressive when they have nothing in their stomachs. So, at around 9 o'clock in the morning, we were all very tired. We looked for this lion completely, we could not find. Due to the great migration Serengeti, some part of Serengeti that is huge of aggressing in the eastern part of the Serengeti ecosystem. So there is this tall grass, if you'll ever be there, tall, tall of aggressed grass called the wire grass that is really tall, almost a meter and a half tall, that it can even up to be next to your chest. So we were walking through this grass we lost the lion track because of the tall grass and we were just walking, we had the kudu horn that we were blowing, we had the ostrich feathers like this one, which we do believe when the lion sees, they will say, what is this that I've never seen? 
So we looked for it and until we gave up. So normally the police, when you're hunting a lion, or looking for a lion to hunt, you hold your spear like this. So when we lost hope of finding this lion, we were putting our spears over our shoulders. We were very tired, no water, no nothing to drink. And it is very bad for warriors like soldiers. We never, we do believe women are the only one to walk on a straight line. So we were all scattered in a big circle, just walking. We all have a name of going back home. When we are walking back about 500 meters from the turning point, uh, I don't know whether the lion saw that I was the youngest of them. He had the experience or maybe bad luck. This lion, believe me, like where John is seated, he jumped at about five meters distance, so powerfully, it's like a ghost. <laughs> and then this lion flew straight to me. And if you can see, I have a big, big wound over my right ribs. And out of panic, I fainted. I died completely. And then I nearly lost my family. I have a big wound over here next to my private part that I nearly terribly he missed by an inch. And then he shook me so quickly that all the bracelet that I had in, in less than a minute, I was completely naked. So over the time, warriors have known that lions are very smart. When they know that they are being hunted by human beings and they have a chance to grab one of the warriors, he will use as a shield. So we pass a law that in case a lion grabs any of you, you should never spear because you might spear your brother or your friend and kill him. So my brother knew, he put his spear down and he took the sword, the Maasai sword. And then when he lifted the hand like this to cut the lion over here, he was cutting it, the lion grabbed, if you did see my elder brother, he, he lost all this meat. The Maasai blanket that you have been seeing, or maybe you have been on a safari and see them, they are so very nice for fast aid. I could not walk, my leg, my big vein was dead. I could not walk and they had to carry me almost 15 kilometers back home. When we come, we have a plant, we call it a, a Comelina pitazi, which is a wandering Jew or an elephant ear flower that is so good for cleaning the wounds. This part, by the time we reach home, it was all swollen like this. So we cut, you can see a lot of many cuts, so that we drain all the clotted blood or bad blood out. We use a Sodom apple plant to make it dry quickly, which it did. Now, when you are washing this wound that was so bad, and this one at the back, we were using either Maasai toothbrush to clean inside. We can only put maybe wood ash, or we can put a little bit of salt, which is a little bit painful, but you will never show any painful in your face as a warrior. So, we never knew that this land had the kind of December virus. So what happened? My legs keep on swelling, swelling. I could not feel any pain. And they decided, let's take him to the hospital. There was a volunteering doctor, I remember very well, his name was Dr. Washinga from England. When he saw me, he said, this is beyond treatment. The only option, the, the December virus was so bad, and the only option was to cut off the leg so that we could not, he could not come up with the body, which would be more bad. My father said, there are only two options for him to be treated or for him to die because I would never want to see my son with one leg. He, I, I will not take it. That was the time that I surprised the doctor so badly and asked him that kindly, I'm feeling a lot of pain and I would like you to treat me. He said, you speak English? I said, yes, I have been to school in Kenya. Do you know about conservation? I told him, yes, I do. And why did you want lion hunting? This is very wrong, and for that reason, I will not treat you. That was a very sad moment, because then my father was very upset, and he was just out of the hospital, and then the doctor went to treat the other patients, and then he came back to me later. He, I explained the whole situation to him, and I said, I'm not going to repeat that again. So he told me, are you sure that when I treat you or when this leg is treated, you will go back to school and you will teach your fellow people about conservation? Yes, I did promise you. 